Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're checking out a new Chromebook from Acer. They always have a new one coming out. This is their Acer Chromebook 14, all aluminum. A pretty nice uh, design here, really nice display, uh, and a pretty reasonable price also. And before we get into the hardware, I do want to mention that this came in through the Amazon Vine program free of charge. However, I've had no direct communication with Acer or with Amazon. Nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look at the hardware here, and then we'll get into some performance. Uh, this has a 14-inch IPS display, uh, really nice actually, and this one, this particular model, uh, runs at 1080, so full 1920 by 1080. Really gorgeous display on here, matte finish as well, so you see some of my studio lights reflecting in there, but uh, not too bad because it does have that matte finish on there, so really nice there. Quad-core Intel Celeron N3160 fanless processor. This is a, a mobile chip that we've seen in a lot of other Chromebooks. Performs pretty nicely, as you'll see in our benchmarks in a few minutes, but not as fast as perhaps some of the options you might have available on the 15-inch model of this particular device. Four gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and AC Wi-Fi at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and the price is $299, so I think it's pretty reasonably priced uh, given what you have here under the hood, the RAM, the storage, as well as the nice display on here. There will be a version of this available with a 720p display too that'll get a little bit better battery life. Uh, they advertise this as 12 hours of battery life, but the best I'm seeing with it is about 8 to 10 uh, with the display brightness turned down a bit. So I think if you really turn the display brightness down, you could probably squeeze 12 hours out of it if you're not uh, pushing it too hard, but uh, I, I just couldn't find a way to get 12 hours out of this device, so your uh, mileage, of course, will always vary from mine, but I'm not seeing the 12 hours there advertising on it, but a uh, pretty nice uh, overall design with some good ports on it. I do like the aluminum casing. It does add a little bit of weight. It's 3.4 pounds or 1.54 kilograms. Uh, what's nice to see on here is that the display will go all the way down to the desk, so if you have a kid who's prone to pushing these displays back too far, you'll be uh, safe here because this does, by design, go down this far. It is not a touch screen, though, but uh, you do have some of the features we've seen on some of the other Chromebooks lately. Uh, what I did find, though, is you do need to open the uh, lid here with two hands, so you do have to hold down the bottom there to get the display lid open, but the display does uh, hold itself in place pretty nicely. Now, we're going to go through the ports here, and you're going to notice one missing in a second here. So we've got the Kensington lock here for locking it down on the desk, two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI out. On the other side, we have a headphone microphone phone jack, a power indicator, and a charging light, and plus the spot to plug in your AC adapter. But uh, I will note that there is no card reader on this one, which is surprising because just about every Chromebook we've looked at lately has them. Uh, this one doesn't, so you'll need to get a card reader if you have camera cards that you want to plug in. And it's kind of disappointing, too, because oftentimes you can use those uh, slots as uh, augmented storage because these generally have limited storage, and this one certainly does uh, with only 32 gigabytes available. So that was a bit of a disappointment. I'm surprised I didn't put uh, that on there. Keyboard's pretty nice. It's got some nice, uh, nicely spaced keys. I wish to travel on the keys, the distance to uh, how far they go down before they spring back up uh, isn't as good as I'd like it to be. So I'm feeling like I would like a little bit more of a deeper travel keyboard. Uh, so that was the only thing I, I found of, at fault with the keyboard. Uh, not bad overall. You'll certainly get used to it, but a little bit more travel time would have been nice. The trackpad I'm having a little bit of a hard time with. It is, it, it's functional. It's not a bad trackpad, but I'm having a hard time with click and drag kind of stuff. And I also found that precise movement aren't as easy on here. It's partly due to the surface of the, of the trackpad. It doesn't uh, feel as slippery as it should be, uh, but I'm also just having a hard time getting fine details on here. And you can see it's kind of jumping around as I'm uh, moving the mouse around. And, and again, on a Chromebook, you're probably not going to be doing a lot of photo editing or things that require fine movements, but uh, the trackpad could be a little bit better. Uh, all aluminum here, so really uh, nicely constructed. There are uh, some speakers here on the bottom. I'm not a big fan of downward-facing speakers because they tend, they tend to sound different depending on what surface they're on, but but uh, decent stereo separation, and they uh, sound pretty good, too. Uh, the webcam here is pretty nice as well. It's just kind of a run-of-the-mill webcam, but it does have a little bit of a wider angle for web conferencing and that sort of thing, uh, so it's certainly passable uh, for doing web conferences. Now what we're going to do is check out its performance. We'll look at some Octane tests and play some videos online and see how it does in real-world kind of applications. All right, let's take a look at some web browsing first. That is what you do on a Chromebook, at least until the Android functionality makes its way over to these devices. Uh, they just announced, by the way, that uh, Google Play apps will soon be uh, usable on your Chromebook, and maybe by the time you're seeing this video, it will already be in place, and I'll be covering this once it happens. Uh, it's nice when you have an Intel processor like this one has to be able to do that. And you'll notice it took a little bit of time for the page to load up, and this is something we see a lot uh, on these low-end processors like this one has. This has one of those Intel mobile Braswell processors, 
And they do fine with a lot of things like video playback and web browsing, but when you do have a lot of ads and other stuff that gets loaded up along with the page, uh, it does tend to bog it down a little bit, at least on its initial load. And that is unfortunately the reason why a lot of people run ad blockers, not so much because they don't want to see ads, but the ads slow down their performance so much that it's not a very good browsing experience. But uh, it will do pretty well as a web browsing device, and it's on par with what I've seen other Brasswell uh, powered devices do. So not too bad on the web browsing side of things. Uh, and I think it will do fine for that. I would have liked to have seen maybe a, an option for a slightly faster processor. So the 15-inch Chromebook we looked at a few months ago uh, has the option for a faster version of the Celeron chip that is based on their uh, faster notebook processors that is a much, much better experience. And uh, given the, how much I like this case and this design and this screen, I would love to see an option for a faster chip on board. Uh, so maybe they'll think about doing that in the near future and offer some additional configurations. Now, where it's going to bog down is when you're trying to play back 4K video. Uh, if you turn it down to 1080p, it should work fine. But if you are you know, downloading a 4K file that you want to look at on this particular screen size, uh, it is going to bog down on you like you're seeing here. A lot of laggy performance here. I also noticed that 1080p 60 video doesn't run as smoothly as it should either. Uh, this one's doing a little bit better than some of the other low-end Chromebooks do, but uh, you will have some drop frames. I'm just going to skip ahead to some faster motion shots here in this video that I shot with uh, my drone and get a better sense of it. But uh, what will happen is, is that as more motion gets on screen, uh, you'll see some drop frames. It's not as apparent as you're watching it here, but if you pull up the uh, stats for nerds, I, I saw, especially in the really high motion areas, that it was dropping uh, frames. So uh, I'm seeing a few drop frames here or there. And as this uh, frame in particular, this scene in particular, really kills it. Uh, so we lost about 20 frames or so in the course of that uh, playing back. And that's partly because, actually fully because, uh, Google is not yet supporting the hardware acceleration that is built into these Intel chips. So these, uh, the processor in here is fully capable of playing these videos back at a smooth frame rate. Uh, we see it on the Edge browser on Windows with the very same chip, but Google just hasn't yet optimized this, uh, this, this browser for the hardware here. And it's really disappointing because this has been going on for months now. And it'd be nice to see uh, them actually take advantage of what they have available to them in this computer. So I think this will be addressed over time. But uh, just know that if you watch a lot of 1080p 60 video, you won't get the performance you'd like to see out of this device at the moment due to that software issue. But it is correctable. And I think it'd be really nice to watch uh, 1080p 60 on this nice big 1080p screen. So hopefully they'll uh, get around to fixing that. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 8,186, which puts it uh, pretty much in line with other devices running with the same or similar processor. So decent performance for what it has inside. There are faster Celerons available so that uh, Acer C740 you see there on the graph will perform a little bit better. That's an 11 inch Chromebook also from Acer. They have that chip in a few other devices in their product line as well, uh, but not in this one. So uh, this uh, looks like the only processor option available on this one at this point in time. But uh, it's good for what it is because you get good battery life along with a very big screen. And a lot of times screens like this uh, suck down a lot of battery life, especially when you pair them up with a faster processor. So I think they've uh, kind of made a balancing act here to get uh, the best performance along with the best screen they can. And that's really the uh, standout feature of this, a really nice looking 14 inch IPS display on here, very reasonably priced for what you're getting as well. And this is a very decent Chromebook. And uh, Chromebooks are going to get a lot more interesting in the coming months as uh, Android functionality comes over to these devices. And I think this will be very well suited for running those Android apps when they are uh, made available. So this will be a very interesting platform. I'm going to have to update my Chromebook 101 video to cover how Android works on there because it's a, a revolution really in the Chromebook world to be able to do a lot of uh, interesting things with apps that are already out there for the Android ecosystem now uh, coming to Chrome OS. And this will be a very good platform in which to run those. So we'll be coming back to this computer when those changes come to Chrome OS. So stay tuned. And this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.